Since 2009, when the University of Belize's Environmental Research Institute took charge of the CCFS, it has become one of the most important parts of UB's education program because it provides marine science education to Belizeans and foreign students. Leandra Cho Ricketts is the Administrative Director and Marine Science Director at the ERI. Our work here is the Turnif Atoll Marine Reserve, so it's a recently declared reserve. And we've been monitoring the ecosystems here and their health for the last three years. And that information allows us to know what's happening. So we know what's happening with the reefs. We know the state and the health of the reefs. We always monitor for coral bleaching. We can detect and note, it, note when corals are bleaching, when they're being stressed by high temperature. Um, we're monitoring lobster and conch populations, especially during open and closed seasons to see how fishing you know, maybe impacting that or how the populations are doing. We look at fish populations like Nassau grouper and spawning. Right now we're doing, at the end of February, we'll be the monitoring the spawning site to see if populations are coming back because that's when they come to reproduce. Um, we also look at mangroves and the health of our mangroves because they are important fish nurseries. Um, they're also important for certain species to, to tourism species like manatees and the sport fish, the, um, sport fishing species and um, we also look at seagrass health so that's the kind of monitoring we're doing and all of that tells us important information on the health of the atoll and its resources. To carry out all the research the CCFS consists of a lecture hall, a dry lab, a wet lab, dorms, kitchen and dining room and three boats and if you are wondering where the power comes from well, the station is fully equipped with a wind turbine and solar panels. And although it may look like a place for a nice weekend getaway, it is strictly for research, according to the station manager, Kenneth Gale. Of course, we welcome everybody because one of the things we're trying to promote is actually to get more local groups coming out here. And even foreigners, no? but as mentioned, it's strictly for research and education purposes. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a resort, as we've been mentioning over and over, but we do accept people to come come around and see what we do. We try to show them what we do here and give them a tour of the facility, but it's not to come here and have a barbecue and have fun and go back. No, it's not for that. Yeah. It's strictly for scientific purposes. Gail says that about 15 foreign groups and 10 groups from UB visit the CCFS per year. Love News caught up with field technician Hani Salazar during one of her surveys in front of Blackbird Island near the reef, and she explained the nature of the study. The air that we just surveyed was a small patch reef. What we're doing is just doing a time survey. So we swim along the reef, uh, looking into the crevices, looking between the rocks and everything, looking for lobster. What we do with that data, we, call, we do a count of what we find. We take measurements of the lobster, and then that data we relay back to the fisheries department. And that data they use as a baseline for the catch per unit that is caught out here, specifically Turnip Island, because that's the focus of ERI. Unfortunately, we, didn't, we didn't see anything today, but uh, what I'm noticing, other data is there's a lot of fish out here right now, a lot of parrot fishers. I'm seeing a lot of juvenile snappers. Also, I'm noticing the edema, which is very um, relevant to the ecosystem out here. Abidas Ash is a UB student and she volunteered in the summer of last year after learning about the program at the ERI's Earth Day booth. Well, I've volunteered in the mangrove um, survey that they have, the coral survey and um, the fish survey that they had a couple both during the summer. And it was a very nice experience. It's the first time that I've actually come out into the see and actually looked at different all that the sea has and it's been a very nice experience for me. One of the most important things we learned during our trip to the CCFS is that the ERI program will soon benefit from innovative equipment in the form of a buoy which will enhance the monitoring and research programs. Consultant for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration in the U.S. and under contract with the Five Seas Caribbean Community Climate Change Center in Belize and currently installing the new buoy is Jonathan Fajans. Um, once that buoy is in place, uh, the data will come to shore um, via a radio frequency and then be collected here at the research center and uh, 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 transmitted uh, via the Internet. 
um, back to uh, Five Cs, to the university, and to NOAA back in the United States, where it will be accessible on the internet to people all over the world that are monitoring climate change. We'll collect um, uh, ocean temperature and conductivity, which uh, gives us um, information to the salinity of the water. Um, we will also be collecting uh, dissolved oxygen levels, uh, nutrient levels uh, such as uh, nitrates and, and phosphates. Um, we will be uh, measuring the amount of uh, chlorophyll in the water, which is a reflectance uh, measurement. Um, and that gives us some insight as to the amount of phytoplankton that's currently in the water column. Fajans is also training the local staff who will be left responsible for the buoy, but the best part of the equipment is that it has a lot of expansion capabilities. As scientists uh, come to the University of Belize and uh, if they want to study a particular um, uh, 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 entity in the water, uh, perhaps the amount of, of car uh, carbon dioxide in the water, or um, they want to measure the amount of light that's reaching corals, or if they want to measure uh, the uh, current velocity or wave height, things like that. Uh, we have the ability to plug in these types of instruments and get that into the data stream without doing any major modifications to the buoy. Agent says the buoy, which also collects meteorological data, does not pose any risk to marine life. UBZRI also does terrestrial research and monitoring and natural research management training. The station sustains itself with funding mainly from Oak and other organizations and two study abroad programs. Reporting for Love News, I am Natalie Novello.